This video is the third in a series addressing the recoil associated with spring piston air guns. Today we'll be diving a bit deeper into some of the factors that can be used to tune piston bounds. We'll be looking at pellet fit, piston weight, spring preload and strength, and transfer port size. Keep in mind that the purpose of this video is to provide you with a general understanding of these factors and how they are interrelated. There is far more to each of them than what will be covered here. Let's begin with pellet fit, since it's the easiest to verify and adjust. As an example, let's use an HW97 that is shooting H&N Field Target Trophy pellets in 177 caliber. Due to production tolerances, this particular gun has a looser or slightly larger diameter barrel. Using standard pellets with a 4.5 mm head size, the velocity is 775 feet per second at the muzzle, while a 4.52 mm pellet produces 795 feet per second. Pellet fit affects the friction between it and the barrel, which in turn affects the start pressure or the pressure at which the pellet begins to move. If the start pressure is too low, the pellet will begin its travel down the barrel before the gun has reached its peak pressure. This results in lower velocities and may also produce piston slam since the air cushion between the piston and chamber has been reduced or eliminated. On the other hand, the tighter fit between the 4.52 mm pellet and barrel will result in a higher start pressure. This delays the initial movement of the pellet until peak pressure is reached, producing higher velocities while retaining the air cushion ahead of the piston. Now you may think that this example is unrealistic and that production tolerances don't vary that much between otherwise identical air guns, but it happens all the time. Now we'll take a look at piston weight. If you've ever pulled apart a Virau spring air gun, you may have noticed steel washers stacked inside the piston ahead of the mainspring. While this seems to be less common lately, the washers used to be used to add weight to the piston in order to adjust pellet velocity. Increasing the weight of the piston allows it to retain more energy when it encounters the cushion of air towards the end of the stroke. This reduces piston bounce and as a result increases pellet velocity. On the other hand, many tuners have worked to remove weight from the piston in order to reduce recoil intensity. With no other changes to the gun, a lightweight piston would reduce this. However, it will also increase piston bounce since there is less mass to overcome the cushion of air ahead of the piston. As we discussed in video 2, increased piston bounce will produce more forward recoil while reducing pressure behind the pellet. This leads to lower velocity and increased hold sensitivity. Swapping springs is what most people think of when it comes to air gun tuning. Because of the complexity of this subject, I'm going to address it in its own video. However, the general rule is that lower spring energy increases the likelihood of piston bounce, while higher spring energy will reduce it, making piston slam more likely. Transfer port size tends to be the least understood part of air gun tuning. It is also extremely sensitive to change and the most difficult to reverse should you screw it up. This is why most tuners won't touch it. To put this in perspective, getting this diameter wrong by just half a millimeter can absolutely ruin an air gun. As port diameter is reduced, airflow between the piston and pellet is also reduced, resulting in more air being retained in the compression chamber which increases piston bounce. On the other hand, a port which is too large will allow more airflow but at a lower pressure. Because of this, less air will be retained in the compression chamber, resulting in piston slam. Additionally, because there is less restriction between the piston and barrel, pellet friction has more of an impact on recoil and velocity. This can lead to extreme pellet sensitivity, which is why manufacturers tend to avoid excessive port diameter like the plague. So let's say we've reduced piston weight by half. With no other changes, the reduced mass of the piston will decrease the intensity of the recoil. However, piston bounce will increase and pellet energy will decrease. 
The gun is now low on power and holds sensitive due to the increase in forward recoil produced by the bounce. We can compensate by installing a stronger spring or shimming the living daylights out of the original, but this will greatly increase cocking effort as well as wear and tear on the gun. The better approach would be to slightly increase the transfer port diameter, which will reduce bounce while bringing velocity closer to what it was before the piston was modified. Once this is done, we can then finalize our adjustments by working with the mainspring. The key here is a balanced approach. No one adjustment is a silver bullet. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this was just intended to be an overview. There are other factors which haven't been discussed here but might be covered later on. Additionally, this video reflects my understanding of the subject, which is based on my own experimentation over the years. I do not claim to be an expert on the subject and recognize that there is more to be learned here. In the meantime, I hope you'll take the time to leave your thoughts or questions in the comment section and I'll do my best to address them in another video. Thanks for watching and take care.